Rush the ball. Glory, 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 glory. I'm not going to be that long. I'm not going to be that long, but I got to sing this song. Yeah. Glory. I got to tell me a story. Glory, glory, glory. I got to tell me a story. Please share if you really care. Hallelujah. I give praises to you. Blessings. Blessings, everyone. Blessings, Sister Angie. Blessings, Barbara Henderson. Blessings, La Blanca. Blessings, Pastor Barbara. Blessings, Michael. Tell it, Prophet. I will tell it because I got to tell it. Hallelujah. What's the word, Pro? How you doing, Michael? My Auburn, Alabama family. Ahab, Justin, Rachel, the whole staff over there. Michael, that's my dog. That's my boy. How y'all doing, Frank? How you doing, my brother? David. Prophet Frank, Shekinah. Bless him. You're not going to get on Facebook live. Oh, uh, my dog. Let it out. Oh, let it out. Well, I'm going to let it out. Oh, hey, man, I'm going to scream and shout and let it out. Glory. I got me a story. Basically, I came out here just to make some announcements, y'all. Nothing, nothing major. Uh, I just came to make some announcements about uh, the July meeting um, with Prophet Passion Java, the spiritual prophetic gaffer, the prophet to the prophets. Amen. I was on the phone earlier today <clears throat> with my spiritual father and um, he's excited about coming. We're excited about him coming. So I just want to tell everybody how you can register because um, people have been calling me. There's been a lot of confusion. It's just, it's $25 admission to get come to the conference. That's it. $25 admission some people have been tripping about, why would you charge the admission? Nine months out of the year, we have free conferences. We don't charge anything to get on. How you doing, my sister? Sister Allison, how you doing? How you doing? Woman of God, great prophetess of God. You know, so all year around, we, we don't charge, in, you know, no type of uh, uh, registration fee or anything. So the first time we decide to... Do a registration fee. People went crazy. People start pulling off wigs, eyelashes, going crazy. Uh, I'm getting trolls on my on my line. People going crazy. Church hurt people going wild. That should be a video. Church hurt people going wild. Amen. But I mean, people just been going crazy, and it's just twenty five dollars to register. Only twenty five dollars. And the only reason why we're charging twenty five dollars to come on is because. We have more expenses. We're not in the same building no more. We're in a bigger facility that sit, uh, yeah, the lashes too, LeBlanca, the lashes too. We use, you know, in a facility that sit uh, 300 plus, and it's at the uh, Crown Plaza right down the street from Lakewood. So it's in a nice facility, nice. We're going to have room rates for down to $79 a night to stay at the Crown Plaza, and this is the nice Crown Plaza, amen. Uh, and it's going to be beautiful, just $25 registration. Now, that covers Friday night. The twenty-five dollars cover Friday night and Sunday night impartation. Now Saturday, you can't come, you can't come unless you paid a hundred dollars, and the hundred dollars is for all three nights, and that's for VIP seating and private session with the prophet. 
Amen. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be prophesying everybody in the building. You, I mean, you're still going to get blessed Friday and Sunday. Don't get me wrong. Impartation. But for VIP seating in the front, and space is limited, for VIP seating and private session on Saturday, it's going to be $100 per person, $175 for couples. That's it. You know, some people go to these big old Christian rock concerts, and they charge them thousands of dollars or $300 just for the just to come. You know, nobody complaining about that. Or they have these big old conferences with this uh, prosperity preachers and you got to pay this for this seminar. Nobody says nothing about that. But as soon as the true essence of the prophetic comes, everybody got a problem with that. Nobody don't say nothing. Nobody. I think what it is, a lot of people are prejudiced about who they're, who's coming out. They don't mind paying big money to see these big name preachers. They don't mind paying money to see uh, this certain person or this person here or people that's their favorite television person. They don't mind spending money for that. But when the true prophets come and true apostles come in the building that has the anointing that's not as popular as the other people, it's a problem. And we get more results than the ones that's on television. Now, I'm not knocking television preachers because... I'm one of the preachers that's going to be on your TV screen. You're going to be seeing a lot. However, I do not like when people have picks and chooses about who they want to see, what kind of profit they want to see, and, you know, because they have their favorites or because of certain skin color or certain uh, uh, um, certain ethnic group or certain uh, they're in this certain clique or this, is in, this person is in this certain clique. All of a sudden, you know, it's okay to pay a registration fee for that, but because... You know, that's right. Twenty five dollars for all ages. Yeah, twenty five dollars for all ages. You know, uh, so you know, if, unless they're zero to nine months, you don't have to. They don't have to pay. They're a baby, but from one on up, they have to pay the twenty five dollar registration fee. Just twenty five dollars. That's what. That's uh. That's three three Whataburger meals. That's it. You know. So come on, people of God. Let's not make this hard. Space is limited. Again, we can because of fire fire code situations, we cannot violate past three hundred uh, seats. Amen. So make sure you pay your little twenty five dollars and come and get imparted into. Come and receive from true prophets of God that really hear from God. You know, the hundred dollar registration is for private session. I mean, what can you beat that to where you can sit up here and get counseled by true prophets of God, myself, Prophet Passion, and my some of my brothers, some of the other Gotha Knights are gonna be there as well. You can't beat that. You can't beat that at all. And then you're gonna receive impartation from me, Prophet Passion. We're gonna lay hands on everybody uh in the building on Sunday. I mean, you can't beat that, people of God. Amen? So, I mean, you can't beat that nowhere. One word from God, an accurate prophetic word, will change your whole situation. You know? Yeah, exactly, Apostle Bless. Some people spend that on snacks. $25. You know? Some of y'all spend $100 on this one pair of shoes. You know, that you probably, probably wow. never going to wear. Shopping. Yeah, and just like that, for three days of prophetic impartation, you can't beat that. You know, if you want the VIP CD and whatever, uh, it's $100. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you're really hungry for the things of God, sow your seed. You know, you're sowing into the anointing. So that way, if, you know, because some of y'all come to these meetings, y'all suck up the anointing. You come here, you want people to lay hands on you, you want a word, but you don't even sow. Or you didn't invest. So this is the way to where this, I'm bringing a man of God away from you know, from another country, plane tickets, hotel calls, all this stuff costs. The gospel is free. We're not charging for the gospel. We're charging for the expensive to hold the meeting. And that's what a lot of people get twisted. We're not charging for no gift. We're not charging uh, you to come and get a word. We're, we're charging because the simple fact is we need to take care of these expenses. You know, if I put you in a little hut in the project somewhere, or if I sit up here and have a meeting in the hood, y'all won't even come. Oh, it's not in a nice area. Dangerous. I've seen it's too dangerous. Uh, why? Why you could have had it in a better spot? But to have it in a better spot costs money. If not, I can bring everybody in the hood where it's cheaper. We don't have to charge the registration fee. But guess what? You'll be too scary to come. And you're a Christian though. You're a Christian, but you're too scared to come in the hood. You feel with the Holy Ghost. You feel with the Holy Ghost, but you're scared of ghosts. Come on now. Come on now. Let me not go there. Jesus. 
So this is the reason why you, I brought it in a better neighborhood where you can feel safe and secure. So, But it's going to cost you a little bit. It's going to cost you just $25 or $100 if you want uh, better seating. And I'm not going to let you drain the man of God dry, but you don't want to sow into the anointing. The devil is a liar. Amen? It costs. The building costs. You know, if I tell you how much it costs per night to rent out the facility... You know, some nights they can charge $9,000 a night. Mm -hmm. How many of y'all want, y'all better want to sow $9, let alone $9,000. Mm -hmm. Just for Saturdays, it, it, they can charge us $9,000 just for one night. So, I mean, and I'm asking for a little $25 registration fee or $100 and y'all complaining? Come on, people of God. I, half of the means that we be having, we barely make that back. Me and my wife come out there with our own pocket. Why am I saying this? Because they got so many trolls that's coming on here. They see the registration fee. And they got millions of people that have registration fees. Some of the big top name ministries that you see charge registrations even higher than that. And people have a problem with it. They don't have no problem with that. Because their favorite prophet or their favorite minister is there that they have some certain biases about, uh, then me, what's the difference? You know, I, I done been in some meetings to where they charge $300 at the door. You know, just for regular seating, not even VIP. But we got a major, some 1200 right? Yeah. We done been in some prophetic schools, charge $1,200 to $1,500 for the school. For three days. Come on, people of God. And and I'm bringing out a major profit. I'm a major profit myself. The value of my anointing, you didn't have to pay a price for it. Uh, me and Pastor Jim was talking about that. Me and my son always talk about that as well. You didn't have to fast for this anointing. You didn't have to pray for it. You didn't have to lose family members behind it. You didn't have to sacrifice family. You didn't have to go to jail behind it. You had to do nothing. You just come in and receive. But you don't want to you don't want to put back in. If I sow to you spiritual things, isn't it right for me to reap your material things? The Bible said. The Bible also said that those who preach the gospel should live of the gospel. That means we're supposed to be taken care of if we preaching you the gospel. The Bible said, give honor where honor is due, and double honor to those who labor in the doctrine and in the faith. You know, so why we have a problem when a preacher, act, you know, asks for money? It's not like I say, y'all got to sell me a thousand dollar seed or anything like that. I just said, let's take care of these expenses. So in case people don't have money uh, to sow, at the time, at least the man of God be taken care of and the bills be taken care of. I care less if I get taken care of or not, but the bills got to get taken care of. Amen. Or we got to do it on the streets. So why is it a problem for that? But if I bring you in the hood because it's it's out of my pocket and more convenient and cheaper, you have a problem with that. You want nice, nice building. So you want to pay a nice, nice cost. You know, ministry costs. Go ye into all the world costs. You know, that's why Paul used to raise offerings for the church uh, in Jerusalem. They needed money because the people were starving. Even the people sold their houses and laid it at the apostles' feet. And when one of them lied about it, about how much they supposed to gave, they died. Now, if there ain't prosperity preaching, I don't know what it is. Have y'all y'all ain't giving no houses away? Y'all ain't giving no cars away? So what are you complaining about? A little twenty five dollars or a hundred dollars? You ain't laying your house at my feet. They laid this at the apostles' feet, and they made distribution to those who had need. There's a flip side to that, too, because we always want all this money uh, from the people, but we don't make distribution when people are in need. My spiritual children will tell you, if they ever need, I sold to them. What I sold to them, if they come to one of my meetings, how you doing? How you doing, my brother Alex? That's another major prophet. Support my brother. Him, my father, they coming out. Bless them. See, this is the thing. My even my spiritual children will tell you. Some of them, when they come and visit me, especially if they're from out of town, I'll pay for their hotels. 
I pay for this, Roman boy. My children are going to tell you. I take them out to eat. I take the whole camp out to eat. Out of my expenses. Even the ones that so consistently are not. I didn't pay people bills. We didn't give away cars. We didn't give away vehicles. Because none lack among them in the book of Acts. So when I get stuff from the ministry and when C comes to the ministry, it won't just go to me or me and prophetess. It go distrib distributed to all those who are in need. Now I ain't gonna let nobody manipulate me and just use me just to consistently. But if I if I feel like being a blessing to one of my spiritual daughters or sons, I bless them. You can even ask about spiritual children. I saw into their ministries. The ones who have ministries, I saw into their ministry. You know? So, you know, for those who are always talking against this ministry, you really don't know this ministry. Because if, if you really knew us, you would know that we always giving away. And so when we decide to do a registration, all these trolls come out the woodwork. But we give away thousands of dollars. Tens of thousands of dollars away. It don't never stay in this ministry. It goes right back out. My spiritual father can tell you that. My brother, let me tell you something, people of God. We must, if you want to grow higher in the things of the spirit, you must sow your way into the anointing. You must support those who are supporting the gospel. If you don't, can't go to Africa with us, support us to go to Africa. How can they hear unless they be, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach unless he be sent? Not just sent by God, but sent by the people to go to these places. To be a sent one is not, oh, I'm sent by God. How many people sent by God but never went nowhere? Oh, I'm a priest. How many people are sent by God but can't even, can't, don't even have, they ain't never reached down one soul? Now you, when they say, uh, how can they hear without a preacher, and how can he preach unless he be sent? That wasn't just referring to him being sent by God, but him being sent by the people to go out. They paid for his trip to go. They used to raise funds for Paul to go travel these places. It costs to get on a boat. It costs to travel. It costs. You got to have food expenses, travel expenses. You know, give away Bibles costs. Feed the poor costs. That's why when Jesus went to the rich young ruler, he told him to sow. He wasn't talking about sowing uh, directly to the poor. He was talking about sowing to his ministry that feeds the poor. The Bible says in, De uh, in, in, in Deuteronomy 26, it says, First give to the Levite, which is your priest or your prophet, the stranger, the orphan, then the widow. But that would mean that the Levite was going to take care of the stranger, the orphan, and the widow. Not you directly. You gave to Moses and Moses made distribution. They gave to the apostles and the apostles made distribution. Well, I sold to the poor. People used to come to me talking about, oh, pray for me for money miracles. I said, okay, do you pay your tithes? Yeah, I just gave all my tithes away to Israel. I said, well, you need to go to Israel to get your prayer. You sold to the apostles and the prophets, and they made distribution to these places. Not you, unless you're a Levite. Now, that got nothing to do with you helping a poor person, or you see somebody in need. Of course, help them out. But your main distribution, your main distribution of tithes and offerings is supposed to go directly to the Levite. Even with the boy, where the two fish and five loaves. He ain't trying to split that amongst the 5,000. Look, let me help all the poor people. Let me split these fish. And look, you get an eyeball, you get a lip, you get a fin. No. Jesus said, give it to me first. He gave it to the man of God first. The man of God blessed it. Then it multiplied and fed the 5,000. Jesus was trying to show them an order. He told the disciples, y'all feed the people. They're like, we ain't got nothing. Of course you don't. You need to give it to the man of God. And the man of God made distribution for the people. He blessed it and then sent it out. Not you. So this is the reason why y'all need to understand this. 
You give it to the person who will have the money miracles. You give it to the person who has the money anointing. You give it to the person who has the favor from God, who have a direct plumb line to the Lord. All of us can hear God, but not all of us can hear his secrets. He gives his secrets to the servants, the prophets. Yeah, you can hear God. Everybody, everybody that's watching right now, all y'all can hear God. But not all y'all do hear God. You have the opportunity, but you don't have the communion. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So it's $25. That covers Friday and Sunday. $100 covers VIP and Saturday night and all three nights. You don't got to pay $25 and $100. You just pay $100 and it covers all three. You pay $25, it covers Friday and Sunday. Couples are $175 for both. That's married couples, not you and your girlfriend or uh, two fellas. Married couples, $175 apiece for the VIP and uh, the one-on-one -on -one session for all three nights. That's it. It's not nothing major. I want y'all to invite everybody out. $25 on uh, uh, ages. Bless you. Bless you, Prophet Darren Cannon. That's my boy from Canada. Bless you. Bless you. And then go for, uh, what you said, Prophet? $25 from once on up. It's $25 registration to get in the door from from the year age of one on up. We're going to have discounts on hotels. It's going to be $79 a night. So please don't go book it by yourself. We about to, we're going to have the, um, we're going to have the, uh, the link for you to register. Uh, uh, we got block rooms for everybody that want to come from out of town. So, you know, come in and, and receive, you know, profit pass is going to be in the building. It's going to be, it's going to be phenomenal. Amen. Just $25 people. That's three hamburger meals. That's it. Amen. That's it. We're not charging your arm and a leg. And again, I don't even like to use the word charge, but it's in scripture. Paul say, did you think I was going to come and preach to you the gospel free of charge? <laughs> Paul, like, you think I'm coming here for free? Oh my God. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, that's another Bible study for another day. But the thing is this. Amen, Elva. Be there. Angela, y'all need to be there. Apostle Blood's going to be there. And all, Jim, everybody. All sons and daughters need to pay that $100. All sons and daughters of the SMI family, y'all need to pay the $100. Yeah. If you're not paying the $100, you're not going to do VIP, so you're going to be sitting with everybody else. And you won't be on that Saturday. Yeah, you can't be there Saturday. So I would advise y'all to pay the $100. All my SMI family members, pay the $100. Amen. I want y'all to receive impartation. You know, I want y'all to receive the revelation. Because see, the main thing is revelation is the key. Well, now, revelation is the key. It's the main impartation. You can have a manifestation. You can have a manifestation, but without impartation, you cannot excel in the things of the Spirit. You can, oh, Let me rephrase that. You can have an impartation. But if you don't have the revelation of the impartation, you only have a seed. You only have a seed. So we're going to be releasing the revelation of the impartation just as well as the manifestation. And that's something different. That's something that money cannot buy. That's something that, that you can't even put a price tag on it. It's priceless. One revelation from God. Not just a prophecy. You're going to get prophecy. That, that's nothing. You're going to get prophecy. But having a revelation on how to tap into it, you can't, you, money can't buy that. You can give a million dollars and, it, and it's, it won't be enough. Because that's what I, I, that's what I long for. That's what I come for. That's the reason why I'm paying all this money for, for you know, to make sure that Prophet Passion come out here, you know, to be a blessing to us so we can receive impartation. So we can kind of halfway do what he does. So we can move in the same manifestations. But this man of God paid a price. I remember a man of God told me, I ain't going to call his name out, but I remember a great man of God on from, from, from television, and I was talking to him.
He said, Sean, if you paid the price to get the anointing, they're going to have to pay the price to get it from you. I said, wow. He said, if you pay the price to get the anointing, they have to pay the price to get it. Now, some of y'all going to say freely receive, freely you give. That's referring to if you need a healing, if you need a miracle, I'll pray for you. But that don't mean I got to impart into you. That don't mean I got to impart into you. The Bible says lay hands on no man suddenly. That's referring to impartation. But healing freely I receive, freely I give. However, Jesus didn't pray for everybody healing. They had to pull on him to get it. The woman with the issue of blood. She wasn't supposed to receive her healing, but she did through her faith. The same lady that was like a dog that Jesus called a dog. He's like, I'm not going to give my children bread to the dogs. And that's the thing. We're not going to give our children bread to the dogs. But guess what? Her faith said that the, the her faith spoke and said, but even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master table. She wasn't qualified for, for to get a healing. She wasn't qualified for her daughter to get healed, but her faith pulled on him to make it whole. So even Jesus turned people away from healings. Even Jesus turned people away from uh, um, um, from getting a healing. He didn't pray for everybody. And he didn't disciple everybody. The rich young ruler asked to follow him, and he said, okay, well, so you see. Give away your stuff. But the demoniac man, he laid hands on him. He prayed for him, but he told him, no. He wanted to follow Jesus. He said, no, go back to your family. So Jesus didn't take any and everybody in his ministry either. So I don't know why we have this false sense of gospel that make us thinking we got to pray for everybody. We got to impart into everybody. We got to lay hands on everybody. That's false. That's not in the Bible. Because Jesus didn't even do it. Jesus didn't lay hands on everybody. Jesus didn't pray for everybody. You had to, you had to come with faith to get, to get your miracle. So I don't feel guilty when I turn people away. I don't feel guilty when I, I serve people having work. I don't mind asking people for seed because even Jesus asked a rich young ruler. He even told Zac Zacchaeus gave his seed away to Jesus. Jesus didn't refuse it. Come on now, people. We act like this is not in scripture. So let people start with the false humility and the false doctrine of, oh, you don't post a receive seed or you don't put freely you receive freely you give but guess what in that same chapter when he said freely you receive freely you give he also said in the next verse don't take no purse with you no tunic nor nothing for your journey for a workman is worthy of his wages the very next verse so basically don't come with nothing they supposed to take care of you don't bring no purse with you. Don't bring no coat, two coats. Don't bring nothing with you because a workman is worthy of his wages. And some translators say a workman is worthy of his hire. So that means when you come to a place, it's like they hired you to take care of their problem. Like a doctor. Then the very next verse after that, he said, if you enter into a house and they do not receive you, nor hear your words, let your peace Come upon the house when you salute a house. When you come into the house, salute it and let your peace come upon it. But if they don't receive you, let me take care of you. Nor hear your words. Let your peace come back upon you. For it's better in Solomon Gomorrah for that town or city, for that home. So if I come into a home or church, or anywhere, and you do not bless me, nor hear my words, I let my anointing to come back with me. Come I don't have to bless you. Because you did not receive the prophet in the name of a prophet, so you're not going to reap my reward system. So let us start with the false humility about money and scripture and stuff like that. This is biblical. Jesus told his disciples, if they don't receive you, it's like they didn't receive me. And if they don't receive me, they don't receive him who sent me. So because they did not bless the disciples, because I don't put them, when I come to a city, I don't put, when Prophet Passion come, he don't put to come with nothing. But he put to leave with something. So if you don't bless him, or you don't take, if you don't listen to his words, he take his anointing back with him. Same thing go for me. 
If I go into a city and they don't take care of me, they don't bless the man of God, I take my anointing back with me. I'm supposed to come with no, no tunic, no nothing, no two coats for my journey. Don't bring nothing with me. Yes, freely receive, freely I give. But if you don't bless me, I take it back from you. Same thing with healing. Jesus said, now go sin no more. Let something worse will come upon you. So even if Jesus himself laid hands on you. That's why people lose their healings. Because they don't got no respect for the vessel that it's coming from. Or they, or they begin to go back into sin. Amen? So even if Jesus himself lay hands on you, if you go back into your sinful ways, it won't last. It's temporal. Same thing with prophecies. It's conditional. You gotta, you gotta be a, you know, you gotta be a blessing to the man or woman. You cannot like the oil, but don't like the vessel the oil is contained in. You cannot like the wine, but don't like the wine skin. It don't work that way. You gotta love both. Cause when you don't treasure both, you like scripture, both be destroyed. Hallelujah. I hope y'all caught that today. So I want y'all to pass this message. It's just $25. I want y'all to register today. Everybody that's on here, go register today. Go there. You pay the $25 for Friday night and Sunday, or you pay the $100 for all three nights and VIP seating. That's it. That's simple. $175 for couples for all three nights. That's it. That's all we're asking. We're going to have hotel thing and everything. Exactly, Angela. No honor, no access. And if y'all come, y'all don't honor, I just take my anointing back from me. That's why some of my spiritual children, when they come in my midst, they'll start seeing signs, wonders, they'll even prophesy. But when they stop honoring, all of a sudden, you don't, you don't hear them prophesy no more. No more healing, no more anointing, no money miracles. When there's no honor, there's no access. I know when somebody not honor me because I can tell by the blessings on their life. <laughs> I can tell. Because I can pray for a, a complete stranger who honor me and blessings come to them. Instantly. Instant miracles. Instant money miracles. But when they do not honor, no access. Plain and simple. I, had, I didn't see people leave this ministry. They used to be moving in miracles. Soon they leave the ministry, you don't hear nothing else about them no more. It's not about me, but my I took my peace back with me. They did not receive me nor hear my words. I let my peace come back upon me. All my impartation, all my revelation. <sighs> yeah, they can watch me on YouTube all day long. But they'll never function in that capacity ever again. Unless they reconnect and come back with honor. The Bible says it's worse. You bring a curse upon yourself when you don't honor men and women of God. Oh, it's all about God. It's not about me. Jesus even himself said, if they don't receive you, it's like they didn't receive me. If they don't receive you, they don't receive me. So stop disrespecting men and women of God. Oh, they can, and this is the thing, they can use the anointing, but they lose it because they disconnect from where the oil was coming from. It flows from the head on down. And when you disconnect from that body part, you no longer get the fluid from that body part. If I hurt my, if I hurt my, I, if I hurt my kneecap and I'm in the section of the leg called the leg section and I hurt my kneecap, if they remove that kneecap, you know what? The whole leg, if the whole leg stop functioning properly. Now I walk with a limp because that body part is no longer connected to it. So unless you connect it to that other part that the main part, that whole leg is going to be messed up. You're going to need operation. You're going to need a cane. You're going to need something. Because that what? A body part is missing. That's what the Bible said. Don't tell her, I, the eye can't tell the ear he has no need for him. The ear can't tell the eye he don't have no need for them. Why? Because when you disconnect to the right joints of the body parts, you lose your placement in the body. You hurt the whole body. So a lot of people disconnect from their headship and their leadership, and that's the reason why they walk around here headless and can't think for themselves. Or they walk around here that don't know what next move to make. They just bounce around trying to look for a head part. Oh my God. They just bounce around looking for a head part to connect to. 
headless. A head, that you know what? We were talking about some no name, no face generation. No, we're no headless. We're headless generation. Forget the no name, no face generation. We're the headless generation. We're a generation of millennials that don't believe in leadership. Without a head, you lost. Exactly. We're a headless generation. We're, we're a generation of people who don't like headship, don't like fathering, don't like to be uh, uh, accountable to nobody. We just want to be a bunch of renegade, loose goose, uh, wild kingdom type people. We want to be the long ranger. Have our picks and chooses about who we want to connect to and who we don't want to connect to. You don't do that. You, when you're in the military, you have no choice of who, where you're going to serve and who you're going to serve under. You get assigned to your to your lead, not the other way around. But we're a headless generation. We don't want to be accountable to nobody. And this is the reason why I was talking about the church folks. Yeah, a bunch of vagabonds. Exactly, a bunch of them. You know, and this is the reason why I was talking about church folks, um, church hurt people. And I was telling from a leadership perspective. Because we always talking about what the leaders ain't doing right, but we never talking about what the people are doing wrong to the leaders. So as soon as I started preaching about that, people got mad. Oh, you're not being considerate. You're not being considerate to people who've been church hurt. Let me tell you something, fool. I've been church hurt. I've been the one getting hurt by leaders, but I've also been a leader being hurt by the pew members. I've also been a leader who got hurt by members and church people. So it's not always the leader's fault. You got to take responsibility. You come in there with daddy issues, mama issues, hurt, rejection, and then you expect us to pray your demons away, but you give us straight up H-E double hockey sticks before you leave. But then now... We start doing the same way to you. Now all of a sudden we false prophets, we false apostles, false teachers, we this, we that. We the problem now. But you coming to me and talking to me like I'm your ex-husband or your baby daddy. Or you talk handling me like I'm the guy who raped you or, or the guy who abused you. Or some of you come in here with man issues. You can't stand men because you've been hurt by men. Or you've been hurt by women. You have a problem, you have a complex. Because you've never been nurtured by your mother. So you come here with a rejection spirit towards us. And then we got to fix your problem. And as soon as, we, as soon as we rebuke you or do something uh, or uh, uh, tell you something you don't want to hear, all of a sudden we have a problem. And because you pay your tithes and offerings, now we're robbing you. <laughs> when is this biblical? You know? After we didn't help cast out your demon, counsel you for hours, help you with all your problems and issues, now we a problem. Now we false. Now we false. But you said God told you to come here. <laughs> you said God led you here. My God. But now God is not leading you here. God is lead, uh -huh. God leading you somewhere else. Like God is bipolar. God, I had a dream about you probably. God told me you were my spiritual father. Now God changed his mind. <laughs> oh yeah, they love prophecy. They love as long as you prophesy to them, long as you pray miracles and stuff like that, bunny miracles. Oh yeah, but as soon as you try to teach them, or as soon as you try to correct them, pew, beep beep, road runner, pew, <laughs> beep beep, beep they gone, road runner stop, pew, 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 they gone. They they got a problem now. As soon as you rebuke them. Soon as you rebuke them, they gone. Soon as you tell them something they don't want to hear. Soon as you let them know that they ain't as anointed as they think they are. Soon as you tell them that they, they can't preach. Or they can't get this position. Or soon as you tell them, look, you're not going to get your paperwork right now. You're not going to get ordained right now. Hey, Papa. All of a sudden, they gone. Hop on. My spiritual father in the building. Oh, yeah, they love the money miracles. They love when we prophesy to them. They love all that. But as soon as we rebuke them, BB, road runner, pew! <laughs> they gone. As soon as you t discipline them, as soon as you tell them about it, pew! They gone. They loyalty left out the door. We got to stop the foolishness, people of God. Church hurt people. Church hurt people hurt people. It's not that they church hurt, they already was hurt when they came. 
They just brought their hurt to church. <laughs> They're not church hurt. Stop saying church hurt people. You already brought your hurt to church. He said, I didn't want, he said, I didn't want you to know I'm here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But church hurt people hurt people. You already come in with your hurt. We have to fight against your demons. We have to fight against your rejection spirits. We have to fight against the orphan spirit that's within you. That's the reason why you can't let nobody father you because you have an orphan spirit. As soon as, because your daddy wasn't in your life or your husband left or your, your, your daddy left your mama, you don't understand true fathering. So as soon as we try to show that to you, you have a problem with it and pew, you gone. And now we the problem. We the false prophet. We the false apostle. That's crazy. But again, since my father's here, and I'm not going to mention, let y'all know who, which one is who. $25 for admission fee. That's that's nothing. $25. Two $10 bills and a five. $100 for VIP seating and private session for Saturday. $25 covers Friday and Sunday night impartation. Saturday, $100. That's Covers all three nights, VIP session as well. Easy. Go to www.shawmore.org. Register today because we have limitations on seating. We want to make sure that we be a blessing to the prophet. And let me tell you something. My spiritual father, one day I can say about him, he will come to a meeting. Let me tell you something. This is a high profile prophet. A major prophet to the nation. He'll come to a meeting and don't even want to take a dime. He does that often. He'll come to a meeting and don't even want to take a dime. So the registration fee is basically taking taking care. Buying my time. I'm buying my time now. <laughs> I'm buying my hands now. Is that he buy? Even my spiritual father about to buy buy his ticket. Come on now, people of God. Let me tell you something. You are dealing with real profits here. I even had to pay. <laughs> yeah. Me and my wife had to pay registration $100. fee. We had to pay our hundred dollars a piece. You know, so I'm telling you, people of God, you can check the records. Angie will tell you. We reg we we pay ourselves. Even Angie had to pay. That's our that's our number three. So, you know, we bless people, you know, all the time. My spirit father, he blessed people. So all this registration fee registration fee is just to go take care of the tickets, take care of the building. Like I said, they trying to charge us. They were trying to charge us nine thousand dollars a night because they do weddings around on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why we had to do it in the daytime to get it for a much cheaper rate. And I ain't gonna tell you, it wasn't that much cheaper. <laughs> so the thing is, people of God, we've spending all this money for you to be comfortable in a nice place down the street from Lakewood Church in a nice area right yeah, off the right. freeway. People like to spend money what's important to them. Yeah. Yeah. People like to spend money on what's important to them. But what's more important than your spiritual growth? What's more important than you receiving from a major they prophet? Spend money on fleshly stuff. Yeah, they'll spend money on fleshly stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just a hundred dollars. You're gonna spend that on one uh, on on a uh, on a fake lace wig. I spend that on getting my nails done. My wife spend that on getting her nails done. That's nothing. Twenty five dollars and a hundred dollars for VIP. That's it. Register today. You know, we're not begging anybody, but come and be a part of the meeting. My, my spiritual father is going to do a video about it. It's going to be dangerous. The prophets are going to be in the building. We're going to be in the building prophesying. My spiritual father is going to be prophesying to the people. Hallelujah. It's going to be off the chain. Every passion night, y'all need to be there. We need to greet Papa. Wanda say she's coming. Uh, where's the sacrifice? Exactly. Everybody in Houston need to be there. All the Passionites, all the Gothanites, y'all need to be in the building. Register the day. It's it's not much. I want y'all to come. We're gonna have um we again, we're gonna have the uh the link for you to to book your hotel. Only $79 a night for a nice hotel. Amen. Yes, our Papa the Gaffer. Yes, the living legend. Amen. Papa. We we young Gaffers in the building. But you know, this is a major, I'm major prophet. And my wife is a Gothanist. Yeah. We have a major, major prophet. I let me tell you something. I didn't study every prophet from Africa, yeah, from America. Yeah, Ain't nobody as detailed yeah, as, as as Prophet Passion. Yeah, 
I'm being honest with you. There's uh, there's two more that just as prophetic, but he get deep in details, and it comes to pass. So one thing about it, he wouldn't be out here if I couldn't vouch for him. And one thing y'all know, I'm accurate. I'm an accurate prophet myself, but he's dangerous. Amen. And y'all want to make sure y'all come out. Be a part of something that's great. This is like a this is like the meeting of the year. What the gaffer means? It means living legend. <laughs> living legend. I'm a young gaffer. But the you alpha tell them how you went deeper prophetic on me. <laughs> yeah. I sp I spoke I spoke accurately today. My my spiritual father contacted me today. My spiritual father contacted me today and he told me, he said, I want you to uh, get up. I don't sleep. Get up, pray, and God is going to give you a word for me. Now, I prophesy to people all the time, names, situation, every time. But when it comes to prophesying to a major prophet, you get intimidated. <laughs> but I tap into the realm of the spirit. Come on now. And God gave me a word for him, and he said it was it was it was accurate. God gave me the place. God gave me the situation what was going on. And he gave me some other details, you know, and even it impressed my spiritual father. And it's hard to impress him because guess what? He's from Africa. <laughs> you got to come with it if you're a prophet. And most of these American prophets, they don't come. They don't come with it. Most of these American prophets, they can't even tie their shoe. You know, he said it was extra deep. Yes, God gave me details. You know, God gave me details. And, you know, again, only real prophets know real prophets. Only real prophets know real prophets. So, you know, for me to prophesy to my spiritual father, that was a that was that was a, a blessing to me. You know, and for me to go deep the way I went, you know, it was very impressive. Even my spirit. And guess what, Papa? Right after that, I called one of my spiritual sons and told him to prophesy to me. And he prophesied to me. And he prophesied to me and my wife, and it accurate. was accurate. Accurate. A lot of confirmation, a lot of accuracy. So you were messing Apostle, with Apostle Blair. Apostle Lionel Blair, my spiritual son, he went deep. He's another he's another young gaffer in training. Amen. So you dealing with a family of eagles. You need to come and be a part. And see where our spiritual lineage came from. See where we get our, our what we why we are so deep and why God is blessing us so much. Come and be a part of something, a part of history, a part of something that's gonna bless your socks off. Many of you want to go deep in the prophetic, many of you want to learn how to prophesy, many of you want to go deep in, in the things of God, you need to be there. Wow. I even pro oh wow Bishop Jones told me to prophesy on him. Mm. Wow! After that, I told you to. Mm. <sighs> wow. Yes, I even oh my, I feel in the Holy Ghost. You're I'm gonna let my spiritual father tell it. I even prophesied. My spiritual father told me after I prophesied to him, he told me to prophesy by Bishop Noel Jones, my grandfather, our spiritual grandfather. And I went into in certain details about him as well. And and my spiritual father will tell you, it was accurate. It was accurate. I went from prophesying to my spiritual father to my spiritual grandfather. And it was accurate. I'm, I ain't talking about no surface prophecy. I'm talking about details that nobody could have knew but them. Even told them the month a certain situation was to happen. Told them the month, the this only stuff that they would have knew. Oh my God. Y'all not catching it. Jesus. Y'all not catching it. You need to be at this meeting. It's gonna be dangerous. Oh my God. Woo. And I and I had just woke up. I wasn't feeling annoying. I wasn't even in a spirit. I wasn't even in a spirit fully. I just woke up. Get around those who hear from God. You want God to move in your life? Get around those who hear from God. Get around those who are hearing in the spiritual realm. Get around those who are taking it to another level. Because one word from God will change your whole situation. One prophetic word from a prophet, especially a major prophet, will change your whole life. 
will change your whole situation. You'll never be the same. So I want y'all to register today. I want you to invite other people out. I want you to um uh I want you to invite other people out. I want you to share this video and I also want you to go register today and encourage others to register because seating is limited. Again, seating is very limited. Amen because of for uh fire codes, we cannot go past a uh, a certain amount of people. So, it we want to pack this place to the max. Register today. Seating is limited. VIP, the link is on the website. Go to www.shawmore.org. Register today. The early you register will go by how, how you will be seated. So if you want to make the front row, the first three rows, go register today. Because we're going to go by who registered first, et cetera, et cetera. And that's how we're going to do the seating. Amen. So make sure y'all come and be a part of it. I can't wait to see my spiritual father. It's going down in July. Also in May, we have prophetess uh, Valerie Moore. She's another accurate prophetess. Make sure you come. Hallelujah. Yes, Apostle Blair, I received that prophetic word. I received that word in Jesus' name. Uh, uh, Valerie Moore is coming in, in May, so she's next. And y'all going to get a taste of what's happening. Amen. I make sure I register first. Amen. <laughs> Do, do, he that's, yeah, he got the first seat. Amen. Make sure y'all come today and register. Valerie Moore's meeting is free. Also, Shay Hall is coming in August, and she's a dangerous prophet. I ain't never seen too many women prophetess that flow like she does. I mean, she making some of these men prophets look bad. Make them want to go back to prophetic school. So make sure you be there for the Shea Hall meeting as well. That will also be um, at at the at the Crown Plaza as well. Our last meeting um, by um, um, by Pastor Greta and the Rock Worship Center will be with Valerie Moore, and that's going to be dangerous as well. I'm going to be prophesying. Valerie Moore is going to be prophesying. It's going to be very very powerful. So make sure y'all come. In May May the fifth through seventh is going to be free, but the major meeting of the year will be with our spiritual father, the Gaffa, the FBI prophet, prophet passion Java. He is a major, major prophet. I'm the CIA prophet. Me and my wife are the secret service prophets. And we're going to speak some things over your life as well. But make sure you come for the FBI prophet is here. And the whole secret service family of prophets is going to be there in the building. Make sure you be there. Apostle Blessing, he's going to be there. Amen. Praise Wanda, God. make sure you share this to all the Gotham Knights and all the Passion Knights, all those. I, I want my brothers to be in the building. I want everybody to be in the building, but you must register. I don't care if you're my mama. You got to register. Amen. Everybody got to register. No, you know, we can't. We got to make sure we be a blessing to the prophet and be a blessing to the, to the, to the, uh, to the meeting. Amen. So that's all I really wanted to say. To all my SMI family, make sure y'all register, get the VIP seating. Amen. So make sure you come. Angela is posting up um, uh, um, the, the uh, material. Go to www.showmars.org. Make sure you register today. Do not miss out. We will have the link for the uh, Thank for hotel. Thank y'all for sharing. I love y'all. Uh, we love our spiritual father. He loves y'all. He's going to be giving y'all details about the meeting as well. Another fly is going to be coming up. Uh, so all the Passion Knights, all the Gotham Knights, y'all make sure y'all be there. In the she said, I'll be there in all three. LaBlanca, hallelujah. I think I think LaBlanca registered today. I think she registered for both, I, I'm not sure. Uh, but make sure y'all register. <laughs> Amen. Make sure y'all register today as soon as possible. Amen. Because seating is limited. I love y'all. I, I, I thank y'all. We're going to be prophesying like deep. I mean deep. Make sure you come. Again, many people can teach the prophetic, but not a lot of them cannot manifest it. So make sure y'all be there. Amen. Come and hang with the eagles and stop flying with chickens. Amen. Bless y'all. Prophet Sean Morris in the building, and I'm out.